All right, so I got an email the other day from a student asking me specifically about this exercise from a Cambridge textbook. Uh, they really wanted to know about question two. So we're sketching a derivative function from a picture of a graph. Uh, I'm going to do a couple of things from question one to set the scene, and question two is where it gets really tricky. Now, these are really important because in external exam situations, um, they really like to put these on there because they think it demonstrates an understanding of what a derivative function is. Of course, the question is, what's a derivative function? And we're going to work with this definition here. It's a function that tells you the gradient of another function given any x value. Let's do an example so you understand that definition. Now, I could, if I wanted to, find out the actual function that I'm looking at and then derive that and figure out what the derivative function is. But I'm purposely not doing that because this video is about just drawing the picture given what you've seen. So, what do I see? Well, I see that this thing has a constant gradient, right? The gradient of this, if you remember from like year nine maths, the gradient of this is uh, rise over run. 2 across, so the gradient is equal to 2 over 1. The gradient everywhere is equal to 2. The gradient here is 2, 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 the gradient here is 2. And remember, the derivative function tells you the gradient of another function given any x value. So, this one has a derivative function of exactly... 2. It doesn't matter what the x value is. If the x value is, let, this is probably like negative 2, then the gradient is 2. If the x value is negative 1, the gradient is 2. If the x value is 0, the gradient is 2. So on. That's what the derivative function tells us. Now, this question is where it gets more interesting because this looks like a quadratic, but I'm not actually given enough information to figure out what quadratic it is. It just is a quadratic. Um, so, I have to be able to sketch this without being able to find the equation of the quadratic. So, I'm going to use a technique that you probably haven't seen before, but I'm going to, well, you have seen it, but you haven't seen it like this before. I'm going to use a table of values. So, I'm just going to mark in some points here, negative 1, negative 2, boop, boop, boop. And what I'm going to do, let's zoom right into this. I'm going to create a table of values, x and m. Okay, bit weird. I'm going to line them up with the actual graph itself. All right, so an x value of negative 2, an x value of negative 1, an x value of 0, an x value of 1, and an x value of 2. And actually, I'll go just a little bit further with a 3 here. Okay, now what I'm then going to do is figure out the gradient at each of those points, because that's what the m is, that's the gradient. So the gradient here, it looks like about negative 5 or something, right? I'm going to leave that for a second. The gradient here at negative 1, you can see it's less steep than that, maybe like negative 3 or something, I don't know. Here at 0, you can see the gradient is less steep again, and it's almost like a 45 degree angle. So it looks like it's about a gradient of negative 1. I'm going to put that on my table, negative 1. Okay, what's this gradient here? What's this gradient here? It looks like a gradient of less, it's definitely less than, it's less steep, right? So let's say it's like negative uh, 1 half. And here, well, that's the one that we definitely know the gradient of. That's the turning point. It's a gradient of, flat gradient, a gradient of 0. And because this is a quadratic, it's symmetrical. So if 1 has a gradient of negative a half, then 3 has a gradient of 1 half. And in fact, 4 will have a gradient of whatever I decided 0 was. 4 would be over here. And I decided 0 was negative 1. Okay. This is actually a linear equation. The derivative of any quadratic is a linear equation, and this is a linear equation. Now, let's now do what we wanted to do in the first place, which is sketch this. Now, we know that when x 
equals 2, the gradient equals 0. And we're going to have x here, and this y-axis of our derivative function, let's call it the m-axis, because it's telling us the gradient everywhere for our derivative function. So, when x equals 2, m equals 0. Bob. When x equals 3, m equals 1 half. Let's put 1 half right there. When it equals 4, negative 1, and so on. Now, this is a straight line, so I don't have to put all the dots in. Uh, I can if I want to, but I don't have to. It's a straight line. Okay, is it perfect? Probably not, but when it says something like sketch, we're not looking for perfection. We're looking for something close to the mark. The derivative of a quadratic is a linear function. We should know that. Uh, and we know that this turning point here has a gradient of zero, and I've clearly marked that. Should probably put the number two there. Everything else I can't really mark. That's enough. Okay. Basic idea for 1a and c. I think we need to do one more here. We are told so little about this function, but it doesn't matter. We can still sketch the gradient function because we're sketching, right? And the way that I'm going to do it is again by creating a table of values. Um, now, because I'm not told anything about this, when I create my table of values, I can just make decisions. So I'm going to say, well, this is zero, this is one, this is 2, and this is 3, uh, and this, I need to sort of mark them evenly, otherwise life's just going to get too hard. And then I create my table, my x and my m, and I'm going to put them there like that. And I have negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and then I start filling in my gradients. So m has a gradient of zero, right? Flat, right there. This is negative, probably like not too negative, negative a half. Two, that looks like a 45 degree angle, which means that that's going to be a gradient of negative one. And then this one at three, that's pretty steep. That looks like a gradient of like negative three. And now looking over here, negative one, not very steep, so negative a half. Still, still a gradient downwards though, uh, and this one here, negative two, that's a gradient of 45 degree angle, about negative one. And now, I can mark those same points in line with this. Now I'm not marking numbers on them, because those numbers were just an aid for me, something to help me. I'm just putting, putting like marks on them. And now I'm putting in the m values. This is my m axis here. So, negative 1, negative 1. That's negative 1 right there. Again, I'm not sort of marking it, I'm just keeping it in my head. Negative 1, negative a half. So that's halfway between there and there. So that goes there. At 0, 0. 1, negative a half. So that's 1, this is negative a half. Negative 1, and negative 3 down here. Again, these sort of look symmetrical if you sort of rotate them, so that's what we're going to get. And this is a cubic function, and the derivative of a cubic function is a quadratic function, and that's the shape of what we've generated here, doing that. Okay, this video is already nine minutes long and I haven't gotten to the bit where the student was actually asking me, how do I do question two? Where the shapes get super weird. Well, the answer is do exactly what I just did. So maybe one of the ones that is super weird is this one here. So let's sketch that one. All right, so again, I'm gonna do the same thing that I did before, zero, one, because this is, we're told that's one. So then sort of this point here is two. Actually, this is not drawn to scale here because it says that this asymptote here is x equals two. So that's x equals one, and this is x equals two. All right, let's run with that. This is zero. Let's call this x equals um, negative one, and then let's call this x equals negative two. I can do up my table of values again, x and m, 
And then I need to start thinking about what the gradients are at all of these points. So at negative two, you can see it's not very steep at all, right? It's like um, negative, so negative two. The gradient here, not steep. It's like negative 0.1. Here, the gradient is much steeper. If I draw a gradient here, still not very steep though, like negative one half at negative one. These are all just guesstimates, but we're looking at it. At zero, you can see we've kind of got this 45 degree angle again. So at zero, the gradient is negative one. Now here, flat, the gradient is zero. And then we have this weird thing here at this x equals two, and we've got this asymptote. Now, technically, what we can say is that as x approaches two, or as the limit approaches two, limit of x approaches two, then the gradient approaches infinity. For the purposes of what we're doing here, we can be a bit more casual about it, and we can just say like a big number. It's incorrect, but this table of values is for our own use. It's not like formal, right? So infinity, undefined, a big number. What about like just to the left of it, like negative 1.9, oh sorry, uh, at x equals 1.98? A bajillion, a very big number, right? So we're getting closer and closer and closer to infinity. Okay, let's sketch. We have the x-axis, we have the m-axis. Let's start from the center and work our way out. When x equals zero, the gradient equals negative one. Let's put negative one there. Okay, and we've got a point there. Uh, when x equals negative one, let's call that lined up, line it up, negative one x equals negative a half. That's one, that's negative one, that's negative a half. When x equals negative two, the gradient equals negative 0 0.1. Right, that's negative a half, that's negative 0 0.1. Just sort of project your way into the future here, right? If we went all the way over here to the left-hand side at x equals negative 10, the gradient would be even less, even less the negative 0 0.1. It might be negative 0 0.01. What we've got is an asymptote here. Okay, so as we get further and further here, our gradient is getting closer and closer and closer to zero, but never quite zero. What about here? At one, zero. All right, at one, the gradient is zero. And at two, a very big number, like the biggest number. So I'm putting it way up here somewhere, right? Now we can sketch this. Right, it's going to take me a little bit of effort to sketch this, but I'll try my best. We've got an asymptote, and then we're coming down here, and then we're coming back up to infinity, right? So we've got an asymptote there, because we never get to infinity, and we also have an asymptote there. Okay, so there's my like weird sketch of that there. You can see that this is tricky and it really does test your understanding of what a derivative function is. But I think creating these tables of values really helps. I'm gonna do one last one and then I'm gonna get out of here. So what we have is, I'm gonna call that point zero. Uh, this is obviously an important point, so I'll call that point two. I'll put a point here, one, a middle point, so I can sort of deal with it. I'll call this point three. Now, there's a point four over here, which maybe we will use, maybe we won't. Uh, and then we'll call this point one and point two. Obviously, these are all negative, negative four. Okay, again, table values. We think about the gradient at each point. I'm gonna start from the obvious ones. Negative two has a gradient of zero. Zero has a gradient of zero and then work from there. One has a gradient of, well that's pretty steep, like a gradient of four, let's say. Again, this is a sketch, we don't have to label any of these, we're just doing it for our own thing. Um, okay, what else do we have? We have here a gradient of about one, 
and we have here a gradient uh, about as steep as that, so an, a 4 as well. This one, very downward sloping, so a gradient of like negative 8. And then negative 4, very steep, right? So like negative 1,000. Okay, and then we line up our sketch. X-axis, M-axis, that's for our own thinking. Really what we should do is like F dash of X. Okay, uh, and we line them up. Gradient of 0 when X equals 0, so 0, 0. When X equals 1, Y equals 1. That's a good point there. When x equals 2, y equals 4. I'm lining these up. Everything lines up. 2 with 4. Um, negative 1 with 4. So there's negative 1 with 4. Uh, and then 2, negative 2 with 0. Whoa, really wild here. Um, negative 3 has a very negative gradient. So negative gradient now, we're way down here somewhere. And negative 4 has a very negative gradient, so we're way down there somewhere. Okay, this is all smooth, which means that our gradient curve should also be all smooth. So let's look at it. We start way down here with a very negative gradient, we come up to there, we turn, we come back. Okay, so smooth. Let's see if I can do this. Smooth, smooth. Smooth. Oh, that's not super smooth. All right, these should be nice smooth ones. Smooth and back up. I think that's a pretty good effort. So my goal here has been to systematize this thing that often isn't systematized. Um, so the system is create a table of values that lines up directly with it invent numbers or use the numbers they give you, either is fine, and then put your dots on, draw your line. Okay, create a table of values, put your dots on, draw it. If the question was smooth, make yours smooth. Again, put dots on, put dots on, join it all up. Okay, it's a system to it, it's a system that should work Good luck.